this is another book notes episode i'm talking about primal branding it's a book about brands and what makes brands sticky why people recognize brands and i heard about it through tim schmoyer he runs the uh youtube creators channel and also he has appeared on pat flynn's podcast that's where i heard about him originally so the book really talks about how brands aren't just icons and logos brands go further than that countries have brands there's different elements to brands so we can look at the logos that is definitely a part of it and like appearances and things like that so with nike they have a very recognizable logo maybe like one of the most recognizable on the planet and also it's like the colors but then it's also the experience so you get a new pair of shoes they arrive in the mail and they have a distinct box you recognize the colors and the logo and a lot of people that like collect shoes they're pretty particular about the box being in good shape so that's part of the experience another thing with people that collect shoes buy a lot of shoes is this experience of standing in line it might be less prevalent now with online buying or online shopping but even now you have this ritual that's a part of it where you have like the countdown timer in different shoe brand apps where you'll get a notification new shoes is coming out you have to sign up and then open the app at the right time have it be ready to buy and there are definitely still people that line up for shoes so that's all a ritual and it just makes me think of any time that there's things with the lines people love or people hate standing in line but they enjoy talking about that experience and it just becomes a thing of um yeah so like going through a struggle together with people it 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 does connect you and it connects people to your brand if if they have to if it becomes an experience to exper- be a part of your brand and the book subtitle talks about uh creating zealots and that just reminds me of StarCraft uh where there is a unit called a zealot so And then that just got me thinking about like StarCraft as a brand and why a lot of people connect with Blizzard, which is the company that makes StarCraft, and they've been very successful. And Blizzard games do have a distinct style, but it also just makes me think of online gaming, where I did play a lot of StarCraft when I was uh, growing up, and there was always this pregame ritual, you're in the game lobby, and I'm sure a lot of this is still in play. There's sportsmanship to it, so you do the good game, good luck, have fun. At the end of the game, you say, you know, good game. If you don't, then uh, bad sportsmanship, things like that. And again, going back to like Nike, it's not just an icon and different shoe companies. Nike has the athletes that they've signed and uh, people associate like Michael Jordan with Nike, Ken Griffey Jr. with Nike, and now LeBron James and things like that. And then Adidas athletes, there's also uh, Kanye and his association with Adidas, and then Kanye himself has his own brand, and it's a lot more prevalent, maybe not a lot more, but uh, with the internet and uh, the way that celebrities can connect directly with their fans, it does mean that there's a lot more personal branding that is involved in these things. So Kanye has his brand. Uh, This is maybe a little outdated to have the shades with the uh, I think that was more like glow in the dark tour, but I think people do still associate those things. That got me thinking of personal branding. Growing up, I watched a lot of wrestling, and every character, every wrestler has their own brand, and it's an important thing, their gimmick. And you don't want to just be. In the 90s, a lot of it was just gimmicks, so Undertaker is just a full character. Um, Brett the Hitman Hart was uh himself so but there there were branding elements to it like picking pink which i'm reading his biography and he talks about combining canada's colors white and red and that's pink and it stuck with him uh throughout his entire career and then branding is not just um people or logos think how they look it's the whole experience and 
Uh, part of that's the origin story. So all of these characters have their origin stories. The Undertaker had his origin story. And with wrestling, it's a little more flexible. It's closer to like comic books. His brother, Kane. But also, uh, this is broken glass. So it's another element is audio. Uh, you hear the shattering glass, you know, Stone Cold Steve Austin's coming out. Another thing connected to the broken glass is back to origin stories. Shawn Michaels was part of the Rockers. He kicked Marty Jannetty through Brutus the Barber Beefcake's window and shattered the glass and then started his own career, uh, his singles career, which is a big thing when a tag team breaks up and then uh, one of them or both of them start a singles career. And that's kind of Shawn Michaels' origin story. And then it just reminds me of UFC and uh, recently and may. <laughs> Maybe the, hopefully this is like evergreen content and this dates it. But uh, recently there was the Mayweather McGregor fight, so people talk about how it's a, a show and the, all of it was just a show. It's not really like in the spirit of boxing, blah blah blah. But they made a ton of money and they knew they know they know the game and it's uh, taking elements from promotional elements. WWE does it and then. Uh, UFC and like boxing you have to Mayweather and McGregor they have their own origin stories Mayweather created uh, Money Mayweather he used to be Pretty Boy Floyd he still you know it doesn't disappear completely but um, a lot of times you'll hear he's actually a pretty savvy businessman he knows how to promote you don't make uh, hundreds of millions of dollars just uh, by luck you don't they, they're both promoters McGregor I think I, I'm a fan because I've looked into. You kind of have to like dig a little to see his origin story, but yeah, he's a, he was a plumber. Uh, a lot of positive self-talk, belief brought him to where he is, and he became the biggest star in MMA, and then was part of the biggest fight, at least money-wise, in fight history. So it just shows like the branding elements of it. Uh, their brands were important to. Uh, have the promotion there and then let's see what I got something else in the book is that locations can have their own brand red white and blue is tied to and any country has their their colors so this book's from 2006 it talks about how and in hindsight this is pretty um it, it's interesting to see how things panned out they talk about I guess oil money was running out, so um, this is kind of how Dubai turned into a resort location in the world, and I think this was earlier on, but it does seem like in the past 10 years since this book was published, 10, 11 years, Dubai has become, they were successful in turning it into, at least in the, yeah, in the minds of people in the world, it is now this like resort location in the desert, and it, they, it was designed to be that way from the start it's there's like man-made islands and things like that and then it reminds me of or not reminds me but they talk about uh disneyland disney as a brand and what that represents and then i'll try to describe a location and then we'll see if you know the brand that this connects to so i guess kind of spoil that but not really uh, so, cabs are here, a lot of cabs, all over, and then, you know, um, this is a picture of a shirt, the tank top, laundry, laundromat, some people got it already, this is the gym, take the laundry out of, or take the shirt out of the laundry, and this was just... Not just a normal shirt, but it was the shirt before the shirt. You got your gym, you got your tanning, and you got your laundry. I'm talking about Jersey Shore, which has great branding. And I, I won't say it's like a everlasting brand, but it did uh, make me think of all the different elements that they had in that show. So they had catchy phrases. They had um, interesting characters. And then you could see how characters were part of the, not characters, but like the people were part of the brand. And then just the imagery. And people still associate, um, yeah, like th those characters with the Jersey Shore. 
and a lot of people that haven't actually been to the Jersey Shore just think it is what was depicted in uh, the TV show. So anyway, those are my book notes for Primal Branding, and it's it's just it it's a great book. Check it out. It's interesting because it was kind of like pre Twitter, so you can see. I'll probably do another video about um, different brands that have uh, taken shape since this book was published. So you could see like Instagram, Twitter, and like Snapchat have very distinct brands that were quickly developed in the last 10 years into things that people recognize nationally, internationally. So check that out. Thanks a lot for checking this out. You made it to the end. So, uh, Hit subscribe if you like this. Thanks.